Greetings everyone, my name is Lance and this is a video on Serial. In the realm of Serial stuff in, in the computer world, there are generally two types, two standards that we use. One is TTL, which stands for Transistor to Transistor Logic. It's the uh, form of signaling or data communication that most computers use internally to their system. Um, typically it's either in the 5 volt or 3.3 volt range, although you could use other voltages as well. Um, but basically anything that's uh, like 0 volts or 5 volts, you'll have data that looks like this and that indicates some sort of a uh, zeros and ones. Zero is the zero bit is at zero volts and the one bit is at whatever the the system's voltage is, 5 or 3.3 or whatever. RS-232 is the system that uh, most computers have on the back of their, their uh, on, on the back of the case and it's generally designed for communication between multiple devices. RS-232 devices usually are capable of tolerating some electrostatic discharge and a little bit higher voltages also to, to carry it a higher, uh, further distance. Um, RS-232 though isn't the same sort of signaling type as, as TTL is. Whatever that zero voltage is, RS-232 swings both sides of zero, uh, plus or minus. The standard says it has to be about 12 volts, but uh, I think the devices have to be capable of anything up to plus or minus 25 volts except that instead of 0 and 5 being as they are or for, for a 0 bit and a 1 bit um, the 0 bit is actually high and the 1 bit is low. Write that down here too as well. So there are chips that we can use that translate from one system to another. Here is a chip from Texas Instruments, the MAX 232 line and these basically can translate between TTL and RS-232. Uh, they make these for 5 volts, but um, obviously they have some for 3.3 as well. I don't know how many other voltage types they have, but this particular chip has two, uh, two inputs and two outputs on each side. So there's, there's two inputs on the TTL that go to two outputs on the RS-232 side, and then there's two inputs on the RS-232 side that go to two outputs on the TTL and it takes power and ground and some other capacitors and stuff too, but um, that's how we can translate from one to the other. And that way this device takes care of any electrostatic discharge compensation that we have to deal with as well. Um, now on the, on the computer side of things, you're probably pretty familiar with, with these ports. Um, these are the nine pin serial ports that everybody is uh, pretty familiar with looking at in the back of the case. Um, most people call these DB9s. Technically, they're actually DE9s, though. Um, the main one piece of information you're going to want to know here is which one's male and female. The, the male is the one with the pin. All we care about is what, what gender the contact is, not the case around it. So, male has the pins, female is sockets. And that goes for different connector types, too, including like this ugly thing from back in the days when serial ports were 25 pin. This is a DB, which is the size of the, the thing, with 25 pins. So it's a female DB25 going to a male DE9. And we have some other things like uh, no straight through cables, male to female, just an extension cable. Um, you get some fun stuff like the null modem cable, which in this case is the, the same gender on each side. And I'll explain what that does here in a second, which is null modem. Is in, like here you had one in, one out. Um, between any two devices, you've got uh, something that transmits, usually labeled TX, which sends it one way, and something else that's RX, which is the receiving side. So whatever device you're talking to, there has to be a TX on that side and a receive as well. Well, you can't have the transmits sending to each other. That doesn't work. So the transmit has to go to the receive on the other side, and the transmit on this side has to go to the receive on the opposite side there, too. So a null modem cable says that pin 2 go on the one side goes to pin 3 on the other, and pin 3 on one side goes to pin 2 on the other. So the data crosses over. If you plugged a straight through serial cable in, uh, like this extension cable, but if it had the right genders to get from one to another, you'd end up with pin 2 goes to pin 2, and if they're both transmit, then the data doesn't get anywhere because on the receive side nothing is receiving anything at all. And then you get into really weird things like this splitter deal, which is a uh, uh, serial Y cable. It's got one male and two female ports. And this thing is a lot like this diagram here, except this transmit goes to a second 
receive and there's another TX another device that goes to the receive. Now the problem is you can't have two things that transmit both going to one receive so one of these two has to get cut or just not connected at the other end but since they don't really know what you want to do it's not in this cable it's uh, you're gonna have to do that on your end whether you snip a pin or just don't plug something in or whatever. Um, the reason I have this cable is because I used it on a combine that had a yield monitor and a guidance system that were two different boxes so I had the GPS receiver plugged into one end and it sent GPS data to two devices. The yield monitor, I snipped the, the TX pin off the yield monitor side. Well, I didn't really snip it, I just didn't hook it up. I used an adapter like this, which is what Case IH 2388s, 2588s require for their hookup. And then the, uh, yield, the guidance system had both transmit and receive. So that's how I got out of having two transmits going to one receive.